Good morning. It's October 19th and I'm here at the Jewish Community Center with my good friend Lenny Reese. Lenny, you've been in Arizona a long time. Tell me the circumstances about you arriving in Arizona. Well, at the time it wasn't happy. Uh, it, was nine, it was August of 1961 and my husband, I had met my husband Barry at Ohio State. My parents were just very anxious about the idea that I might meet someone from Ohio. And when I met someone from Newark, they were thrilled because we were New Yorkers and Newark and New York are close enough. But this Newark guy decided that we were going to be pioneers and we packed up he went ahead and I followed him here to Arizona, Arizona under great duress with my then six-month-old son, Mitchell. And it was August of 1961. We got off the plane and in those days planes, planes landed on the tarmac. When I disembarked the plane with my son, I thought, hmm, there's a lot of heat coming out of the exhaust and the plane must, the engine must be throwing off this enormous amount of heat. But much to my surprise, as I moved further and further away from the plane, the heat did not lessen at all. And that was my introduction to August in Arizona. And the heat is something that I've been dealing with since 1961, not my favorite part of living here. When you first moved here, were you, was that a Jewish neighborhood you lived in? Uh, even if it had been, I don't think I was in any position to do anything. We um, were working on a very, very tight budget. We had one car, a Volkswagen, without air conditioning, which my husband took to work every day. And I spent an awful lot of time feeling sorry for myself. But then, when I was able to scrape up 25 cents an hour to pay a babysitter, and I started to meet some people, my life really started here, and much of it, maybe even all of it, revolved around my connections in the Jewish community. We joined the Jewish Community Center, and that became our country club. I sat around the pool with other young mothers and their children, and from there, I heard about a Hadassah group which I then joined and met many people, many of whom are still my friends to this day and the young people that my kids met in the pool at the JCC are their friends to this day as well. So um, from that JCC and Hadassah connection I was fortunate enough to become involved with Federation and young leadership and my Jewish life really took off and never stopped. And uh, I, I credit the Jewish community here with a very full and wonderful family life. When did you start working? There was uh, my day of epiphany. Uh, in college, I had majored in um, education because that's what kids did in that day and age. But my fantasy always, always to be a part of the world of journalism. And as soon as my youngest child, my daughter Andrea, started junior high school, I went to the offices of the Jewish News and literally offered myself to Pearl and Cecil Newmark. And they had known me through my activities in the Jewish community. How long were you at the Jewish News? Uh, I started in 1976 and worked up from part-time reporter to managing editor through uh, Cecil and Pearl's regime and then when Flo Eckstein bought the paper. Well, let me share a few special things that happened to me while I was editor at the Jewish News. I was invited to go on the first journalism trip with journalists to Lebanon right after the war. And that was an extraordinary experience for me. We actually followed the path um, of the PLO. We went into a cave where there still was ammunition. We walked on a road outside of Beirut where we had to watch every step for fear that there might be mines. And at that point, I met some of my professional colleagues and formed bonds to this day. And from that point on, I've been to Israel 14 times, 13 times professionally, and once as the winner of an El Al, an El Al competition for a story about El Al. Uh, other experiences uh, through my professional career was an invitation to the White House when the first 
President Bush had just returned from a trip to Israel in anticipation of his run for the presidency. And he smartly enough thought it would be good to get that story into the Jewish newspapers. And I was among a few journalists who had been invited from throughout the country to visit with him at the White House. That was very exciting, but getting there was more interesting than being there because my plane was late. It never left Phoenix. I wound up through a series of misadventures in the airport in Philadelphia, 2 a.m. in the morning, alone in the airport with some janitors and one sailor sitting at a bar that was closed. And in the morning, I got, and no luggage. The luggage never made it. In the morning, I got to Washington, D.C., 6 a.m. in the morning, bought a toothbrush at the airport, was wearing jeans and a Western shirt, called the White House. Marlon Fitzwater was the press secretary at the time. I got through to him, incredibly enough, told him my situation, and told him what I was wearing. And I said, I don't want in any way to seem disrespectful, but I want to come to the White House. And there was a long pause. He checked with some people, and he said, you just come along. I took a cab to the White House, went through the door that I was supposed to go through, went into the room where all of my professional colleagues were dressed to the nines, the skirt that I had bought for the event was still in a suitcase somewhere. When we went into the area where we were going to be meeting George Bush, people were looking at me a little strangely, but I managed to carry it off. After all, I had brushed my teeth. And uh, when George Bush walked into the room, he looked around and he said, now which one of you are from Arizona? And I said, me, he came up to me, he took my hands in his hands, and he said, those airplanes are just impossible, aren't they? And he put me at ease, and that was a very, very special moment. And what about your, the other president that you met? Uh, I have, uh, well... Oh, no, uh, I wasn't the president. <laughs> well, I have met and interviewed many uh, prime ministers in Israel, um, but two Americans, who I had the occasion to meet and interview will always stay in my mind. One was Simon Weber, the editor of The Forward, the famous longtime Jewish Yiddish newspaper in New York. I went to New York one summer and arranged to interview him. He had just come back from Stockholm where he had accompanied Isaac Bashev, a singer who was the recipient of the Nobel Prize. And I sat down with this wonderful gentleman in his office and we had a great chat. Then, through circumstances, I had met the woman who became Mrs. Barry Goldwater. Her name is Susan because we were neighbors. And when Barry Goldwater was really getting on in years, I connected with Susan and asked if it would be possible for her to arrange for me to interview Barry Goldwater. And she did so. She invited me to their home with a photographer. And I sat with Barry Goldwater at his desk overlooking the valley and we chatted for a long, long time. And these are experiences that only would have happened because of my affiliation with the Jewish News as a journalist. So I am forever grateful for those experiences.